Morning guys, I am currently in Vegas. We're here for the National Association of Broadcasters uh, Expo. It's in the Las Vegas Convention Center. And it's a show where all kinds of filmmakers and the manufacturers that make all the equipment get together, network, and show the latest products, right? We're getting ready to leave here for the second and last day at least for us. And I just wanted to take a quick minute to address one of the questions that I got in my channel. It's about batteries and about how to make uh, modules. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time uh, and I'm actually working on it. I just couldn't finish it before I left. And so today I just want to touch on it briefly so I can help this one uh, individual that is asking questions on the channel. So here we go, uh, Casper Krumings. I hope I pronounced that name correctly. He's asking, um, I have about 2,000 battery cells and each one is used, more or less. Uh, he includes some examples of just boxes and boxes and boxes of 1850s that he's got. His question is, so I have sorted out in boxes by capacity, left, from 2,000 milliamp hours all the way to oh, 3,000 milliamp hours, right? And so he wants to know how um, to assemble modules. He wants to assemble, let me see if I know. Uh -huh. I think he wants to make 24 modules of 150 cells each, which is pretty much like the one that I made back in the day. Uh, and he says he only has Samsung, Panasonic, Sanyo, LG, and Sony, which is good. You only want the big fives. He says no no name or China made fakes batteries, which is good. You don't want to get any of those fake 5,000, you know, 4,000, any, anything about 3,500 milliamp hours that is not from, from the big five manufacturers. Those are fakes and you shouldn't use them. Okay, my advice is to make your 24 module exactly the same capacity. The first thing you do is write down all of the different cell models that you have and try to find the spec sheets for those cells right if so if the maximum output is around 3c those are what is known as energy cell and then anything that's about 3c you know 10c or 6c or whatever then those are power cells those are cells that are designed to push more power and they're usually going to be slower in capacity so you have to differentiate between your power cells and your energy cells and i what i would suggest is you take the power cells because they're probably going to be the smaller number of your cells and you mark them with like a red pen or something somehow make a mark on them so that you can tell which ones are the power cells right okay now here's the part where uh, i'm gonna borrow the this technique from this guy which is another youtuber that goes by the name of Renault super genius right so you put all the cells in line from the smallest capacity to the largest capacity right so the the smallest around 2000 milliamp hours and then the largest which is around 3000 milliamp hours according to, you, to your email right and you start making your modules by taking the smallest and then that's part of that's one the first one in your first module and then the highest capacity that goes into your that's the second cell for from your first module and then you take another from the smallest then the biggest, the smallest, the biggest, the smallest, the biggest, until you have made your first module, 150 cells or whatever size you want to do it. Then you start your second module and you do the same thing. You take the smallest, then your largest, your smallest, your largest, your smallest, and your largest, and you do that and then you finish your second module. And you keep doing that until you've used up all of your cells and you have all of your modules that you're gonna make. What that will do essentially is that it's gonna make sure that all of your modules are really, really closely matched in capacity. That is what you want. You wanna have all the modules as closely together, right? Um, also, once you have your modules, lay them out and then see where your marked power cells are in all your modules. Make sure that they're sprinkled um, 
evenly across all your modules. You don't wanna have like one module with a lot of those concentrated in that, right? So you wanna be kind of even across so that when you're using all the modules, they all stay together because they're all equally sized batteries. They can push around the same amount of current out uh, and they have about the same amount of energy stored in them and capacity. And so you won't have to use uh, a BMS. You won't have to like every time you charge, you know, they're all out of sync or whatever. Even if you use a BMS, this is useful because when you charge and discharge, you know, the, the modules are not gonna fall out of balance uh, excessively. And so making your BMS work harder and you know, just taking a long time for it to, to, to balance them at the top, right? And so that is how everyone should be making their modules. Whether you're gonna use a BMS or you're gonna be like me and not use a BMS. In fact, that's the only way that you can uh, decide to not use a BMS. That is the reason why I can get away without using a BMS because my all my modules in my car they're all perfectly matched. They all have, a, you know, very closely capacities and very closely matched uh, internal resistance and in all the groups of cells. So that's why I charge them up and they're all even and I discharge them and they're all even and I'll charge them up again and they're all even. And even two years after first installing them, I checked and I check them at the top, check them in the middle, check them at the bottom and they're all closely together. So that's how you do it. Uh, Start doing that because I know that's quite a bit of work. But the more work and the the more the more meticulous you are in building these modules, the less problems they are going to give you. Um, if you look at Peter Matthews from Australia, he did his power wall. He didn't do that, right? And so he has modules that are you know different sizes and stuff, and he's now he's getting around to change them stuff. But even with modules that are like all uneven and stuff, um, he's been able to get great great results. Um, and he's been powering his house now for, I don't know, what, a year? What is it, Peter? It's been a long time, right? So Peter's doing, he's really proving the concept that the power walls <laughs> of made of DIY cells are possible and they work because he's, he's made them work. You know what I mean? Like I'm more talking about here about concepts and stuff because I started doing and I did it in small scale. He went big. He's got like, I don't know, what are you up to now, Peter? Like. 40,000 uh, uh, watt hours, you know, 40 kilowatt hours. What, what, are, yeah, it's some crazy, right? Thing. So, uh, if you don't follow Peter, go follow Peter also. You can learn a lot from all his adventures and all his tests and all the things that he's doing. He's using a BMS. If you're interested in using a BMS, I'm, I don't have anything against BMS. I just don't feel like it's essential and I know how to work my batteries without it. If you want to learn how to do that, yeah, keep watching my videos. I will be explaining more as to how I, is it that I can get away with doing that. Um, but if not, go ahead, go ahead and start doing your modules this way because that is a good idea whether you're gonna use one, a BMS or not. Okay guys, so right now I gotta hit the show floor and uh, see what's up new in camera technology. So today's gonna be fun and I'll see you guys back when I get back to LA in the next video, all right? Bye. <laughs> That's weird. Nah. Oh my god. Let me, let me it, needs, it needs some more testing still. You see, I'm in my fucking crane stance right now. Ready to jump. Controller, man. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not, and then it does. Yeah, oh my god. Well, that, you can't. That you can't go like that. <laughs> Oh, what's going on there? <laughs> you better be careful, man. That shit is That's like insane, dude. Whoa! What? What's I, going on? I think he's having trouble connecting. Like, it's probably super busy. Like, the airwaves here? No, that's not cool. <laughs> nah. <laughs> We were gonna take it out and like get get one of these companies to like bring one of those uh, cranes yeah. in a car and follow them like down the street just to get a shot. They're gonna do the thing. They're gonna bring the crane out, but I don't know that we can pull this out. And... <laughs> and then the motor's engaging so, so fast that the belt's slipping. Right? Yeah, the belt's slipping. Yeah. It's got too much torque. Is that what's going on? 
Yeah, it's weird. I mean, that is not working. 